I'd like to welcome everybody here today um, and thanks for coming to this pre-election rally to demand an end to prison privatisation, stop Aboriginal deaths in custody, justice for Mr Ward and cancel all contracts with G4S. I'd like to um, especially welcome Mr Ward's nieces uh, who have come up all the way from Geelong to be here today. So thank you sisters, thank you for being here. I'd like to remind everybody here, whether they're part of this demo or not, that we are on the sovereign lands of the Wurundjeri people. And I say sovereign because they never gave it up. Never have they given us permission to exercise our law on their land. I also want to pay respects to their elders. All those thousands upon thousands of generations of people who walked this land before we came here. But also to those people, those elders and those other Wurundjeri people, who are walking this land now in spite of our best efforts to wipe them out. And I also want to pay respects to all those Wurundjeri people who haven't been born yet, but who will walk this land. And maybe one day we'll walk this land together with them rather than pretending they don't exist. This message is from Marion McKay. Marion's an activist um, from the Ward Campaign for Justice in the West. And Marion says, Greetings from the West. You mob are too deadly over there. Keep up the good work and pressure their mob until all privatisation is gone from this country. The government are allowing multinational companies to make profit out of people's miseries. The victims and the prisoners. It's wrong on so many levels. Give my support and thanks to all the mob over there for everything you've done and keep it up. So a message from Marion McKay, a deadly activist and leader of the WA Deaths in Custody Watch Committee and the Ward Campaign for Justice. This case has so many baffling points. Where does one start? I chose the hypocrisy of the decision of the Western Australian Police not to release any information about the circumstances and death of Mr Ward to the Koori Mail throughout their investigation as a starting point. This refusal occurred simultaneously with a statement to mainstream media by Commissioner Carlo Callaghan stating that the Western Australian Police are committed to a thorough investigation. Is that hypocrisy or is it just lying? What part of our culture legal system, social structures or infrastructures allows such an outrageous act of cruelty to be inflicted on any living, living creature, let alone a human being. I'm not going to say too much, but I'd just like to thank you all for coming out and um, on behalf of my Kumatri and Ward family, I'd like to say thanks and we really appreciate it. Thank you. Any time an Aboriginal person dies in custody, whether it's in Port Phillip Prison, whether it's in Long Bay Jail, or whether it's in the back of a privatised van, then it's a concern not just to Indigenous people in this city and in this country, but it's a concern to anyone who is concerned about social justice, trade unionism and the fight for social change. Because it's Aboriginal people first, it's trade unionists second and then it's the rest of us. And what happened at the back of that truck in that 1,000 metre journey is beyond imagination for that gentleman. But the reality of it is if we worked our way backwards, who is to blame? First and foremost, obviously, the guards that put that man in the back of that van in that torturous journey for 1,000 k's through that heat, 50 degrees. Second of all, the company that employed those two men that took the contract and put profits and the almighty dollar before the health and safety of the people that they were arresting, then if you go back again, who's got to take responsibility? It's the politicians, Labour and Liberal, who gave those contracts to these privatised companies, who privatised in the first place, 
the, the transportation of prisoners from point A to point B. And then when you go back even further, who's driving the privatisation agenda through the media and through their front politicians, because that's what they are, because they're all the same pretty much in the major parties. It's capitalism. So it's capitalism to blame, because they're the ones in this country, in New Zealand, and all over the world who are driving this privatisation agenda, which is taking away things from the public sector. Even these cops over here, in 10 or 15 years' time, they'll be quite rare. The people who'll be doing the policing on the streets in Melbourne will be private security, like we're seeing in many Western countries today. In fact, we'll be going, where's the police? Because we're fed up with private security. We've already seen it on the transport system. We're going to see it more and more outside our now clubs, outside the footy matches, and so on. It's privatisation and capitalism that kills. It was the guys who put them in the back of the van. They were just the front. They were like the guards at Icewich. And they need to take their sense of responsibility, no question about it. And they need to be put on trial. And they need to be found guilty. And they need to do, do time. But we also need to put on trial the Labour and the Liberal politicians who signed these contracts and the system behind it that drives this privatisation in the first place. I'm from Western Australia, from Perth. Originally, I've, I've lived there for 25 years of my life. Uh, you can't really talk to too many Aboriginal people in the streets without one of, the, one of their family members having died in custody. You know, I've spoken to a lot of Aboriginal people in Perth, and, and, and it's quite quite regular. One of them is one of their family members has been uh, killed in custody. That, that is not an abnormal situation. It's outrageous that this is continuing now. It's outrageous that uh, the the no no charges. Not only has anyone at G, G4S not been brought um, to trial, but no charges have been laid. Uh, I mean, clearly. At the very least, should be negligence. At, the, at, the, at best, it should be manslaughter or murder. And, you know, so I think that they're the kinds of things that uh, it's absolutely critical that when these these situations occur, that there is absolutely no delay in in, in basically putting charges on um, the the company involved and and seeking to to take it to trial. You know, there's just a, a underlying racism in, in in all the areas of the state, but particularly in the police force, in in the, in the courts, in the jails. Uh, there's a there's a, there's a, an opinion that if you're an Aboriginal person, you're guilty, and that's just outrageous. And we have to work to overcome this racism. The three of us who are going to go upstairs are Lisa Kulmatu, Mr. Ward's niece, and um, Mary and myself um, from Isja. But I'd just like to share with people um, what it is that we're giving to the Minister. In honour of the memory of Mr Ward, who died needlessly as a result of racist negligence and profiteering, this rally of Victorian residents presents this list of demands to James Molino, Minister for Corrections. We call on Minister Molino, or whoever is the Minister after the 27th of November 2010 state election, to immediately implement these demands. I'd like to um, put those demands to a vote of this rally so that we can say that they have uh, uh, full support. All those in favour of those demands say aye. 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 Anyone against? Okay, I declare that unanimous. Who doesn't want to hear from us? Shame, shame, shame! He will be hearing from us because while we've got the constabulary and building security who won't let us in the door, I think a 60 cent stamp and a post box will get our message there regardless.